In this video, we'll discover what being symmetric does to the eigenvalue decomposition. And we'll actually see something that we already saw just a little bit ago when we were arguing that Orthus scaling transformations are always represented by symmetric matrices. Well, we have now stepped away from transformations and are discussing matrices on their own terms. So in effect, we'll rediscover what we have already discovered, except now we'll approach it from a slightly different direction. So we're going to use this symmetric matrix as an example, and its eigenvalues and eigenvectors are seen right here. And right now, it's not important how one would discover these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But let me just mention in passing that the three is easy to see from one of our eigenvalue giveaways. And once we know one of the eigenvalues, the other two can be determined from the trace and the determinant. But in any case, we have our eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So now let's use these eigenvalues and eigenvectors to form the eigenvalue decomposition of this matrix that we're calling A. And right now, I want you to do it as if you're unaware of the special properties of these vectors and do it like you would with any matrix without any special properties. And then we'll come back and take advantage of the special properties of these vectors and come up with an alternative eigenvalue decomposition that will be simpler, it will be special in one particular way that I think most of you already know what it'll be. All right, so you do it on your own and meanwhile I'll fill in the numbers and I'll do it quietly. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. So here's x, lambda, x inverse. And what was the most labor intensive step in the entire procedure once we know the eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Well, of course, it was inverting the matrix x. Here's the matrix x. Here is its inverse, and I kind of knew what, it, what its inverse is because I couldn't quite pretend that I don't see the special properties of these vectors. But if you actually followed my suggestion and pretended that you didn't see anything special about these vectors, then you probably used the row reduced echelon form approach to calculating this inverse and came up with this matrix. And you probably noticed that it was a little bit boring and labor intensive. All right. So we did all of this without taking advantage of the special properties of these vectors. And before we remind ourselves as to what they are, let me just say that the columns remind you, just put it out there once again, that the columns of the matrix X are the eigenvectors. The diagonal of the matrix lambda are the eigenvalues. And then this matrix right here is the inverse of this matrix. Okay, now let's take advantage of the special properties of these vectors. And that's the fact that they're orthogonal. Here's where symmetry comes in. The matrix is symmetric, therefore the eigenvectors are orthogonal. Orthogonal means that perhaps this matrix X will be easier to invert. So that most uh, labor intensive step can be omitted altogether. And in fact, it can be. But in order to take advantage of it truly, we need to make sure that the columns of this matrix aren't just orthogonal, but actually orthonormal. We are free to choose eigenvectors in whatever way we choose as long as it's valid. So we could choose this vector 1, 1, 1, whose length in the sense of the dot product, square root of the sums of squares, is actually square root of 3. Let me just write it here because it is square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. That's the length of this vector. Yes, we're talking about our three and not geometric vectors, but I'm sure you'll remember what the connection is. So we will now choose eigenvectors that are orthonormal. So how do we turn a vector that's not unit length into a vector that is unit length? Well, you simply divide it by its length. So what we're going to do now is divide this vector by its length. It introduces square roots, which may be unwanted when you do things symbolically. But of course, when you're working on an engineering 
or a scientific project, you don't really care about the square roots because you're probably doing all your work on the computer. So yes, right now the square roots are a little bit inconvenient, but ultimately it doesn't matter and the convenience that you're about to see greatly outweighs having to work with square roots. So if we were to choose the unit eigenvector, it would be instead of 1, 1, 1, 1 over square root of 3, 1 over square root of 3, 1 over square root of 3. That's taking this vector and dividing it by its length, which is square root of 3. So it's a bunch of 1 over square roots of 3. And that will be our new matrix X. It will have not just orthogonal columns, but orthonormal columns. So 1 over square root of 3, 1 over square root of 3, 1 over square root of 3. And what's the length of this vector in the same sense? Well, it's square root of 6. 1 plus 1 plus 4, 6. Square root of 6. So what we have now is 1 over square root of 6. 1 over square root of 6. And minus 2 over square root of 6. And finally, what's the length of this vector? Square root of 2. So we have 1 over square root of 2, negative 1 over square root of 2, and 0. Is all of this worth it? Yes, it, it is. So that's our new matrix X. Now for the matrix lambda, of course it remains unchanged. All eigenvalue decompositions of the same matrix have the same matrix lambda, unless you start changing the orders of the eigenvalues. And here comes the critical step. The inverse of this matrix, because this matrix is orthogonal, its columns being orthonormal, that's the whole point of this whole discussion. The inverse of this matrix now requires no work at all. It is its transpose. This matrix is orthogonal because its columns are orthonormal. Therefore, its inverse, which goes here, is its transpose. So what used to be the most laborious of the few steps that the eigenvalue decomposition takes now goes away completely. And we just have to write the transpose of this matrix right here. And we have 1 over square root of 3, 1 over square root of 3, and 1 over square root of 3. And the second row is the second column of this matrix. 1 over square root of 6, 1 over square root of 6, and negative 2 over square root of 6. And finally, the last column is the last row of this matrix. 1 over square root of 2, negative 1 over square root of 2, and 0. And we're done. Just like that. Now, of course, you can see the clear relationship between this matrix and this matrix. And to tell you the truth, that's how I came up with this matrix. Just because I knew its relationship to this matrix. So what we have in the denominators here are simply the lengths of these vectors. And we have one over, one over the length of each one of the vectors in the matrix on the left. And the same thing in the matrix on the right, except in rows, because this matrix is the transpose of this matrix. So when I was coming up with this matrix, and frankly speaking, cheating, I simply put both lengths into this matrix, because I know that that division was lacking from this matrix. I had to put it, excuse me, ha. So I did it wrong, so my cheat didn't work correctly, so negative two-sixths. All right, there you go. Uh, okay, so what I did, or now I realize was attempting to do, was simply put both divisions by the length of vectors in here. So instead of dividing each row by the length of the corresponding vector, I divided it by the length squared and avoided, that helped us avoid the square roots, which of course we know that if the original matrix doesn't have any square roots. The, its inverse doesn't have any square roots either. It's just row reduced echelon form, Gaussian elimination procedure. So there you go. That's how I came up with this matrix. So the difference between this approach and this approach is that the lengths of vectors 
are evenly distributed between these two matrices. But that's sort of the detail. The big picture is that because the matrix is symmetric, the eigenvectors are orthogonal and can therefore be easily chosen to be orthonormal. Start with whatever orthogonal set and divide each vector by its length. And once we have orthonormal eigenvectors, when we put together the matrix X, it now has orthonormal columns, which makes the matrix itself orthogonal, terrible nomenclature. And once we have an orthogonal matrix, it's inverse, the most unpleasant of the steps in the eigenvalue decomposition procedure, is simply it's transpose and we're done much more quickly. So there you go. That's the impact that being symmetric has on the eigenvalue decomposition.